Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with our nice Copper Dragon miniature here, you can see it's nice and big, but I've also applied this quite big and uh, quite high risen base as well, which is just done with some cork, some sand from my driveway, and a few uh, Vallejo texture paste to try to get a bunch of different textures on there as well. But we're not going to be focusing on that, it's just going to be on painting the dragon. So when we start off with this dragon, we're going to be using Hammered Copper by Vallejo to do this. And this is going to be done with a nice big wide brush probably the one of the biggest and widest brushes you can find that has a nice sort of uh, edge to it since we're going to be doing nice big overall flat areas now i'm going to be painting this over the entirety of the miniature except for the scales on the underbelly i'm going to be leaving those uh, blank for now we're going to be coming in with a different color to do that rather than just make the whole thing one big uh, copper color i want to add in a little bit of visual interest as well as i've been taking some inspiration from the monster manual as well and they have a different color on their uh, underside of their scales as well but with that we want to be making sure we give a good overall coverage with the copper the hammer copper that we have here and making sure that it takes a couple of coats and really get into those nooks and crannies so there's a lot of sculpted detail in this miniature then once we're happy with that base coat of our hammered copper, we're going to come in with a dry brush and we're going to dry brush on some brassy brass to do this. Now, I know brass and copper are two different colours, but once you dry brush on a bit of copper here, it's sort of just a lighter version, especially when we're only very subtly applying it into those high pointed areas. So it's going to help it make it look a bit more brighter and since it's a slightly different colour, help it stand out a little bit more on the edges of the scales and the parts of the wings where we want it to really highlight up now uh, you can see you can probably see that it doesn't really look like i'm doing anything to this miniature it's because it's going to take a, a couple of layers of dry brushing to build it up slowly rather than going on heavy handed with the dry brushing we want it to be subtle more than uh, right in your face okay so once you're happy with the uh, dry brushed highlights we've got here we're going to come in with some gun metal and this is the color we're going to be using for the underbelly of our copper dragon here so our nice different color and it's going to really help give a visual eye-catching piece to the miniature than if we were to go full on copper with the whole thing we want to add in more visual interest uh, to make that piece look not so boring to the eye for, especially from a distance so gun metal is going to help out with this and looking at the monster manual and trying to copy some of the artwork as much as i possibly can they sort of seem to have a silver slash white underbelly and I, I i chose silver with this since we are using a metallic dragon here to paint up so that's what i'm going to be going with for the underbelly then with the scales of that underbelly complete, we're going to come in now with some squid pink. And this is going to be used for the entirety of the inside of the mouth of our copper dragon we have here. So we want to be getting the tongue and all inside that mouth. Now it's going to be a nice difficult place to get in since we've got that big tongue in the way. But just spend a little bit of time really getting in there and being careful with those areas. Since we have a little bit of spillover, it shouldn't be too bad because we've got to do some teeth in here. But if it's major spillover, just come back in with the hammer copper and just come in with a little dry brush and dry brush over those areas if you need to get those highlights back. Then once we have that mouth complete, we're going to come in now with some Karaberg Crimson. And this is going to be our nice red wash here. So you can either use Karaberg Crimson or just a plain ordinary red wash. And that's what we're going to be placing inside the mouth there. So definitely make sure that your paint is dry before you come in and do this step. And now also be careful too, it's going to pull a lot here since their mouth shape is sort of like a bowl. So it's going to collect a lot of uh, that wash, especially in the underside of the mouth area. So just be careful when this thing is drying and work up any excess that you don't want to have in there. So it's not going to be big, pulled, splodgy areas. Then once you have that wash complete, we're going to come in now with some Reichland Flesh Shade. And this is going to be the big wash over the rest of the miniature. We're going to be using this for literally everything that we've got on the miniature. So you can see I've got a nice big wide brush for this. And you can see I've applied it straight to that underbelly. And especially since we're going to be using that copper coral over the whole thing. And we've got that silver belly. It will help tie those two uh, colours together that we have with our gun metal and our hammered copper. So it'll tie it together and make it look like sort of more of a cohesive piece like this 
the scales on the underbelly do actually belong with our copper dragon and it's just a matter of going all around really picking out those areas and being very careful of pulling since we've got some super deep scales embedded in here it can pull up very easily and another place that i noticed too while it was drying uh, was down the bottom of the wings it likes to flow down the wings and really get trapped in the bottom there so be careful of those areas especially then once we have all that wash completely dry we're going to come in now with some shining silver and hammered copper mixed together so this is sort of pretty much two three drops of hammered copper mixed in with one tiny drop of that shining silver which is going to really just help brighten up that copper color that we want there and it's just a matter of going around and picking out all the big bold areas of uh, sculpted detail so you can see here on the head especially we've got some nice big edges on there and that's why i'm coming in and you see i'm using a nice uh, fine tip brush to do this as well and really pick out some areas sort of dabbing some in some places some i'm going with strokes over the areas really varying it up so when you're looking at the piece that it's going to have a variety of different sort of highlights and stuff on the miniatures as well as that that it's got a lot of sculpted scales in there as well so if you want to pick out any of those little ones, don't be afraid to just dab it on there to really pick those bits out. Then once we've completed those highlights, we're going to come in now with just some straight shining silver. And of course we want to be using this on uh, the underbelly and really pick out those nice big scaly plates that we've got with our gun metal. So pretty much I'm hitting the nice big ridge down the center of the chest as well as the very bottoms. I'm sort of just scratching it along there to make it like it's gleaming in the sunlight all of those bottoms of the plate so just a matter of going through getting those out where you want to going a little bit scratchy with it as well so it's got some uneven irreg irregularities to the shine in there too but to being careful that we don't just paint it completely uh, shining silver color we want to still have that variety and then we're using it pretty sparingly then once we have that picked out we're going to come in now with some ivory and what we're going to be doing with our ivory is we want to be picking out those teeth so grabbing a nice fine tip brush as you can see here getting a little bit on the edge and then what i'm doing is basically dabbing and skimming along the edge of those sculpted teeth i'm not worried about painting them so much as i am just sort of quickly stroking the brush along there sort of like a rough dry brush along there to pick out those teeth being just careful of how far i'm making those teeth stand out so it's all a little bit of practice but it's not too bad we just want to be picking them out slowly and this we're more just dry brushing over the white then once we have all those teeth picked out we're going to come in now with some bright green and we're going to be using bright green for the eyes of the copper dragon now i found it quite hard to find any pictures that showed off the actual color of the eyes of the copper dragon here a lot of them especially in the lore and stuff it seems that the older and the bigger the dragons get the more and more smaller their eyes are and all the artwork it's just sort of another dark and copper color but i want them eyes to stand out quite bright so i've gone with a bright green here to really add in that visual interest to the piece and you can see that you know he's angry with rage then once we have those eyes picked out we're going to come in with some matte black just some nice straight matte black whatever color you have on hand that's black enough and then we're going to be picking out the claws and the talons and the spikes on the miniature now it's got some nice of course the big claws on the front but we also want to be picking out all the little ends of the wings as well so as you can see here he's got wings that go all the way down to the base of his tail and every so often one of those uh, spines come all the way to the end in a point with a little claw at the end so don't be afraid to go and pick them out all the way down they'll get smaller and smaller so eventually it'll just come to a point of a dot but it's going to look nice on the piece when you can see that you've got all these little parts picked out and then once we've done that we're going to come in now with some nylock oxide and what this, this is going to be doing is we're going to be oxidizing up our copper dragon since you know copper naturally gets oxidized as long as it's uh, left out and not being treated and as it says in the lore of the monster manual in the books that the older these dragons get the more and more oxidized they become so this here is a young dragon that i'm painting up so i'm not going to go overboard with the oxidization i'm just going to be applying it to any super deep cracks in the miniature like between the muscles and where the arms join to the body and as well as that just also in these areas where those spines of the wings go up to the edge of the wings any real major folds and it's just a matter of going in 
picking out the areas that look good to you and build, letting it build up into those natural recesses that we want to have here so we can have that really cool verdigrid effect, especially from a distance. It's going to look real nice standing out on the table. And with all that now complete, we have finally finished painting up our young copper dragon from the Dungeons and Dragons WizKids range. And you can see by adding in that nice bit of verdigreed effect, we've got some nice interest to the piece. And I can't wait to use it on the tabletop. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along and copy what I did here, or you just want to use my videos for some inspiration. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.